In my career, I've learned quite a few golden rules of data engineering. Things you should never really do if you want to build robust data pipelines. And in my last video, I broke one of those golden rules. So in this video, I'll be explaining my mistake and we'll be working through a more robust solution that makes use of the parameters feature inside Fabric Notebooks. So if you're new here, welcome, my name's Will. I'm a data consultant and I release new videos every Monday to help you grow your data career. Let's jump into it. Okay, so first things first, let me quickly bring you up to speed with the end-to-end -end project that we've been working on over the last few videos. We were working with weather data. Uh, firstly, we built a data pipeline that queried the Open Weather Map API, getting a JSON file of the current weather in London, and we outputted a JSON file into the file section of a lake house, like so. Next, we wrote a Fabric notebook to read the JSON file clean and transform the data, and then load it into a lake house table where we can analyze and visualize it using Power BI. So what did we do wrong? Well, in the data pipeline step, we outputted the JSON file into a folder structure based on a dynamically calculated year, month, day structure, which is a fairly common pattern in lake house design or data lake design. And we calculated this dynamic folder structure using the data pipeline expression language, like so. Then in the Fabric notebook, we replicated this logic, calculating the folder path that we need to read the JSON data from. To do this, we used the datetime library in Python. Can you see where this might go wrong? This is where I broke one of my golden rules for data engineering. And that rule is that we should never calculate the same value in this case, the dynamic folder path using two different methods. Now, I'm not saying that this will definitely fail at some point in the future, but the goal of good data engineering is to minimize the risk of errors occurring in our data pipelines. And the risk in this example is that, can we be 100% sure that these two methods, one being generated by the data pipeline and one being generated by our Python code, can we be 100% sure that these will always output the same file path string? Because if they don't, then our pipeline will fail because the notebook is gonna try reading a JSON file and it's not gonna understand where it lives or it's gonna look in the wrong place. So how can we fix this? Well, first we need to create our file path as a variable in the data pipeline. Then we can pass this variable into the copy data destination location to tell it where we want to save the JSON file. Then crucially, we pass the same variable as a base parameter into the data engineering notebook. And we'll be walking through exactly how that's done in a second. But let's just clarify why that is a better strategy. We are dynamically generating the file path once and then using it twice. When we write the JSON file to Lakehouse files, and then again, we use the same file path in the notebook to read the JSON file into a data frame. Okay, so now we have a good idea of the problem and a potential solution to fix it. Now let's dive into Microsoft Fabric and I'll show you the three-step method that we can use to implement notebook parameterization, which is the thing that is gonna solve this problem for us. Let's go. Okay, so step one, in our notebook, we need to add a parameter cell. So start with an empty cell and then click on these three dots at the top right-hand corner of the cell and select toggle parameter cell. Now our notebook understands that this cell is different to all the other ones. It knows that what we've put in here is gonna be a parameter that we're gonna pass in from our data pipeline. We need to initialize an empty variable like so, making a note of the parameter name that we choose because we're gonna need this in the next step in the data pipeline. Next, we have to adjust our code to use this parameter as the file path that we read our JSON file from. So go into the function below, and rather than the date time logic that we used previously using the date time library, we're gonna just pass in this file path that we get from the parameter. In step two, we move back into the data pipeline. And what we need to do is create a variable that we're gonna be using to dynamically generate our file path that we're gonna be writing to and reading from. In step three, we need to declare this variable within our copy data destination zone and also in our notebook base parameters. And that's what this looks like here.
Okay, so that is it. Now we're generating our file path in one place using one piece of code, and then we're using that in two different places in the write function and the read function. We've successfully made our pipeline a little bit more robust, and we've learned how to parameterize fabric notebooks, and also a little bit about data engineering principles. So if you're interested in catching up with the other videos in this series, then I'll leave the playlist link here so you can catch up on anything that you've missed. And in future videos, we'll be continuing this end-to-end -end project. So make sure you subscribed if you're not already to follow along this journey. I'll see you in the next one.